چه شود که پا گذاری به رواق دیدگانم چه شود که پا گذاری به رواق دیدگانم منم آن که انتظارت زد شعله ها به جانم زد شعله ها به جانم یا ابا ساله 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 Welcome to the Mid Shah 2015 celebration. Welcome to the celebration of the birthday of the Imam, the 1,181st celebration of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Today, we are not only celebrating the birthday of the Imam, but we are celebrating the presence of the Imam, and we're going to remember our Imam together. I have chosen the word presence with some attention. We are celebrating the presence of the Imam today. So, let's start with some admin stuff. First of all, I request everyone to turn off their mobile phones or put it on silent. Because basically, uh, we, we have like quite a few people and like the noise is going to stop other people from hearing what's going on in the program. The second thing is, uh, if you haven't done so, fill in the registration form that you have in your folders and hand it to one of my colleagues basically who are uh, going to be collecting the uh, competition answers as well. So registration form is the second point. Uh, now we're going to basically uh, start with the first competition. And after the first competition, we're going to have the discussion panel. The way this competition works is very similar to the early competition that you had when you came in. Uh, you all going to have an answer sheet in your folders. There is an answer sheet in your folders with 10 boxes, and it says competition one on the top. So what will happen is I'm going to go through some questions here on the projector, and you will have 30 seconds for each question to answer it. It's all multiple choice, and you're going to put for question one the answer in the box with the number one below it. We're going to go through the question very quickly, but in this competition, we consider two things. One of the things is that uh, most of the question does not require like, some knowledge from, behind, from before. So every question that we ask, either it is something that you're going to work it out from the question itself, or we're going to tell you something and ask a question from that. The second thing is like it's for everyone to basically uh, uh, participate. So if in the first competition, it didn't go well, you could basically try in the second competition, very similar form, and we're going to have prizes at the end of the program. So can I have the first question, please, on the uh, screen? So first competition, remember we're going to go through this fairly quickly, so uh, basically you have about 30 seconds to answer each question. So can we have question one, please? So what is the next shape? So look at the shapes. Which one is the next shape? Whichever is the answer, put it in the box, uh, basically with number one. I think we're almost done with the time. So can we go to the next question, please? Here is question two. So you have about 20 seconds to remember these words. Just look at these words. Try to memorize as much as you can about these words. The orders, how many words are there, what are the words? Now is your chance to remember it. Can we go to question, please? 
So, what word came before camera in the words that you have seen? So these are only the warm-up questions, so we're going to get to more difficult ones soon. Can we go to the next question, please? A book costs one pound and a half of the price of the book. So the cost of the book is one pound plus half of its cost. How much does it cost? One pound. Okay, we lost the screen. Okay, one pound and a half, two pounds, two pounds, two pounds and fifty, three pounds, three pounds and fifty. I think we could do five more seconds in this. And can we go to the next question, please? Question four. So, pay attention to this one. If at 12 a.m. it is raining in London, could there be a sunny weather in exactly 72 hours? So, it is raining at 12 a.m. Could it be sunny in 72 hours? Here are the answers that we have. It is London, so it will be raining. It is London, so you never know. If Forica says it is sunny, it won't be. It is not sunny. It is cloudy. Depends on the months of the year. Only one answer could be right. So give it another five seconds, and then we can go to the next question. Next question. Look at this timeline. This is a very similar timeline you've seen at the start of the program. Look at the timeline. Try to remember as much as you can. Numbers, names, how far apart are they? Can everyone read it? No, you can't read it. So I can actually start from, so give it a bit more time so I can read this. So year 255, birthday of the Imam. Then 260, after Hijra is the start of minor occultation. And the first deputy of the Imam, uh, basically, which is Osman, Osman ibn Said. And then in year 265 after Hijra, we have the second deputy, which is Muhammad ibn Osman. And year 305 after Hijra, we have the third deputy, which is Hussein ibn Ru. Then we have at year 326 after Hijra, the fourth deputy of the Imam, which is Muhammad Saymuri. And then at year 329 after Hijra, it is the start of major occultation. So we can go to the question now. Who was the third deputy of the Imam alayhi salam? Can everyone see all the answers fine at the back? I take it as a yes. We can go to the next question, please. How long was the minor occultation? Was it 62 years, 69 years, 74 years, 75 years, 77 years? and 80 years. Remember, put the letter beside the right answer in the box for question number six. Can we go to the next question, please? Question number seven. How old the Imam salam, was when minor occultation started? I think people, do you see the screen still? Thank you very much. And that's part of the competition. Okay. So how old the Imam alayhi salam was when the minor occultation started? Two years old, three years old, five years old, seven years old, 40 years old, or 50 years old? This is question seven. Put the letter you think, which you think is the correct answer in the box with seven beside it. Can we go to the next question, please? So here we have two narrations on this uh, part of the composition. Uh, I think like probably some people are going to have difficulty reading the narration. I'm going to read the narrations and try to remember as much as you can. And then next we're going to go to the questions. So the first narration. One who denies that Mahdi has indeed... Uh, uh, who, one who denies that Mahdi has indeed disbelieved. So whoever does not believe in Imam Mahdi salam, has disbelieved. So that's the first narration. The second narration, which is a very famous narration, you all heard it. Man mata wa lam ya'rif imam zamanihi, mata mitatan jahiliya. One who dies without recognizing the imam of his time, dies the death of jahiliya. 
So these are the two narrations. Can we go to the question, please? Whoever that does not accept Imam alayhi salam is A, a disbeliever, B, a monotheist, C, not Shia, but is still a Muslim, D, like Christian and Jews, and E, A, B, and D altogether are correct. So give it five more seconds. So this is question number eight. And you have to choose between A, B, C, D, and E. So let's go to the next question, please. So here's a logic question. John needs, uh, John needs 13 bottles of waters from the store. John can only carry three at a time. What's the minimum number of trips John needs to make to the store? The answers are four, four and a half, five, or six. It's a fairly easy one. So this is question nine, and we have one more to go. So look at all these flags and countries. So try to, again, remember as much as you can. And believe me, I don't know any of these, basically, flags or countries, but this is more of the memory question. So try to remember the shapes, the names, the colors, and the patterns. So I think we have enough time. Can we go to a question, please? So what country has the following flag? I'm not going to even try to pronounce the names, but you go with the choices you see here. This is the final question. You should have 10 answers in your sheet with competition one at the top. So we're done. So can basically my colleagues please collect the answer sheets from everyone in the hall so we start with the next program. Could you please recite one salawat? Discussion panel today, um, and our subject is um, whether the world is becoming a better place to live or a worse place to live. Before our discussion panel, we have an introductory clip. Please remain silent and switch off your phones during the clip and the discussion panel. Thank you very much. This is Mustafa. He is the first panelist to tell us his view. He believes the world is becoming a better place with technologies and advances we have made to date. Mustafa is a fitness enthusiast and he is very much into latest technologies. He often hangs out with fellow experts in the field of computing and follows latest trends on his mobile. He also follows the latest news on his Twitter account where he has many followers too. Our second panelist is Ehsan. 
He carries out his activities in the British Academia, and he is an expert in the contemporary history. He also follows modern socio-political developments in the world. He is present in our discussion panel to defend his view that our world is becoming a worse place to live day by day and the situation is deteriorating at our hand. Unlike Mustafa, he believes the current situation is far from okay and we need to find out an urgent solution to our problems as soon as possible. He backs up his claims by latest international statistics as we will find out soon in our discussion panel. And our final panelist in our discussion panel is Amir Ali. He is a regular commuter in central London where he provides consultancy for the financial sector. He is a highly respected Muslim brother in the community as well. He also has a keen interest in religions and in specific beliefs of Shia Islam. And in our discussion panel, he will be discussing that the solution to the problems we have today in our world is not in our hand. He believes that the corruption will only be removed from the face of the earth by someone appointed by God. Thank you for the clip. Now I would like to start the discussion by putting this question to my friend Mustafa. Mustafa, why do you claim that the world is becoming a better place to live? Hi, so I'm Mustafa. I'm talking about the good things in the world. So I think we're getting smarter. For example, if you look at the, wor if you look at the world in the past, like a thousand years ago, there was three teachers in the town, but now, if you look if you look now there's five schools in the town can you believe that no now now people are more literate we've got more scientists more genetics we've got nuclear physics so i think we've developed knowledge a lot let's move to another topic maybe like medicine medicine 500 years ago People used to think that honey would cure every single cold or disease. But now we know that every single cold or disease has its own cure. For instance, malaria. Malaria kills thousands of people. But now we've got the cure. We're saving thousands of people's lives. It's just so good to... to or maybe the Black Death. The Black Death started in Asia. It went all the way to Europe. It killed half of the UK's population. That's a lot. But now we have the cure. We're saving so many people's lives. So I think medicine is good as well. Let's go to food or season. People had to wait a year to just eat a food that they loved. But now we've got greenhouse technology. They have to wait only a couple of months just to eat the fruit that they love. So I think Food or season is also good. Let's go to communication. If you look at communication, cavemen used to draw in caves. We don't even know if cavemen are going to pass or actually going to see the message. Or maybe people writing messages and then uh, give it to a bird and then we don't even know if the bird is going to get to the guy or not. It's basically like flicking a coin and get head or tails. You don't know what you're going to get. But now we've got iPhones, we've got emails, we've got tablets, laptops, Facebook, Twitter. We've got so many things. So I think communication is all, all the way to the top. That's why I think the world is becoming a better place. Thank you very much, Mustafa. I think so. You have some valid um, points here. And um, Ehsan, your points are actually the opposite of what Mustafa had said. Do you have anything to respond back to, Mustafa? Assalamu alaikum. 
Uh, as much as I have uh, a lot of respect for Mustafa, I cannot completely agree with some of the points he has stated. Uh, for example, he mentioned uh, education and literacy rates. Uh, in some of the largest countries that happen to be developing countries uh, that supply uh, uh, our uh, living materials such as food and clothing, we have a lot of problems regards to education in them. Uh, uh, child labor is prevailing in some countries such as uh, India or Bangladesh and uh, you know in some parts of the world women do not even have the rights to educate themselves so we have a lot of problems in this area uh, he also mentioned uh, medicine uh, you know uh, the, the bacteria is getting more powerful by the day uh, you know uh, Back in February, the UK's Ministry of Health stated that by 2050, more than 25 million people's lives are at the risk because of mass intake. And uh, you know, when you say we are making advances, we still do not have any cures for uh, diseases such as uh, HIV, Ebola, uh, and even cancer. Uh, you know, as we are getting more globalized, you may think that food is uh, is uh, available in uh, all across uh, in uh, across the world. Well, uh, going from Far East Asia to the heart of Africa, it's surprising that we are seeing people dying from uh, hunger, malnutrition, and even thirst. So. Uh, and even in some uh, developed societies, such as Europe and uh, developed countries, uh, fast food is one of the main causes of heart strokes, asthma, uh, and... Uh, and obesity. Uh, with regards to technology, uh, you may think that uh, mobile phones, you know, they, they can't do anything. They can't do any harm. Well, let's look at an, a recent interview with St Stephen Hawking. He said that if we do not control artificial intelligence, it could harm humanity. So when you're saying that, uh, you know, the world is becoming a better place. I think, I tell you that uh, you need to look at the other empty half of the glass. Although I argue that it is uh, a lot more bigger than uh, half, but uh, still there is a lot of problems that we need to solve. Hey, Mustafa, do you have anything to respond back to Hassan? Yes. I agree there are problems as Ehsan mentioned, but these problems were since the first human beings on earth. We've, we've made the, these problems was maybe like diseases, wars, they were here from the first human beings. But we've done so many advances that not even our producers, producers, producers could even imagine. Let's take traveling for instance. People had to go on animals' backs. We don't know if pirates are gonna get their belongings or even they're gonna get their uh, get to to their to get to their destination alive. But now we've got so many advances. We've got advanced boats. We've got planes. We've got cars. We've even got trains. Um, Ehsan, I think so. Mustafa has some valid points here, right? Absolutely not. You know, uh, according to my statistics, putting First and Second World War together, around 80 million people have died. That's 10 million more than the UK's population. And you know, the, the, main, and the, uh, the main cause of these uh, uh, wars uh, is you know, uh, only technology. I'm not even talking about the recent t genocides that have happened in Africa and in the Middle East, which would take it uh, up to, uh, you know, um, uh, to more than 100 million. So we, uh, we have obviously abused the advances we have uh, made. And you know, you mentioned uh, traveling. You know, uh, although I do think that traveling by planes and cars is time efficient, but since the uh, start of the Industrial Revolution, the Earth's surface is getting warmer and warmer by the day. So, uh, you know, and uh, to make it worse, we are exterminating and uh, destroying uh, uh, nature, uh, nature in some parts of the world. 
Droughts and sandstorms are increasing in uh, some parts of the world, such as North Africa and in the Middle East, which could be harmful for uh, the human life and uh, the nature. So, I do. I still do think that we need to find a, uh, a really good solution to uh, solve all of these problems. Okay, we know there are deep problems in the world, but what is the solution? How we have to improve the solution? Mustafa, I think so. You agree that we have problems in the world, but what is the solution? What's your solution to these problems? The solution is this. Given time, we'll eventually get it right. With research, teamwork and science, we'll eventually have a perfect world. Ehsan, do you agree with what Mustafa had said? <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, I, I did say that. You know, in uh, the uh, you know the uh, you know the uh, solution that we have used for more than two thousand years is just relying on ourselves and saying that uh, you know we will get it right. Uh, you know, using science, we will get it right uh, someday. But you no, know, uh, as we are seeing today, it is not. It is definitely not the solution. I really don't know what the solution is, but still, we need to find a solution and use it as soon as possible, because relying on ourselves is definitely not the solution. Thank you to you both. Now I would like to put this question to our other panelist, Amir Ali. Um, Amir Ali, what's your idea about the discussion you've heard so far? <coughs> well, hello, my name is Amir. Uh, and uh, as we heard in the discussion panel, um, the discussion that Mustafa and Ehsan had, we could say that despite the advances we've had um, in the past, we are in no better position than our forefathers. Um, the technology that we've gained is just in the hands of a few um, powerful countries, and um, they're using other countries to get their resources. And uh, rich are getting richer, and uh, well, uh, poor are getting poorer. Uh, this is a uh, great injustice and it can't be, um, you can't say that this is right, it's uh, against humanity. So basically the, the powerful countries are taking hold of the um, power and ruling the, um, the uh, underhands. And uh, this, is, uh, this is just because humans get crazy with power, they can't control it. Okay, I mean, we established the problems, but what is the solution? Um, good question, um, but before answering that, uh, I need to uh, say something. What we need to know first and foremost is that we've created the problems ourselves. It's not like um, any other animal or any alien just came and uh, made this our problem and then just ran away. In order to solve a problem, we need to know its cause, and the causes are us humans, and we can't um, solve it by our, by our own um, by our own, by relying on our own uh, brains, and uh, we basically need assistance. Let's take a look that, uh, at what uh, a verse of Quran and what Allah mentions. It has been said that um, the corruption has spread on earth and see at the hands of human beings. This was said on chapter Rome, verse 44. So, so this tells us that there's no, there's ha there has been no sign of improvement in the past. And now your uh, question. Well, uh, basically people are divided into two groups. One is are who uh, believe in science and that they can rely on their own brains, their own, the hum their own, their own, own uh, their own will, and they can get it right eventually, like Mustafa said. The second group of people who are who believe in God and uh, that a Messiah or Imam Mahdi will come and uh, by by the by the help of them and their leadership we can uh, save the world and. Uh, and remove and uh, eradicate injustice. This is my, what I think about it. Okay, this is interesting. So you are saying re religion proposes solution to these problems? Yes, well, absolutely. All religions, especially Abrahamic religions and uh, Shia Islam, and they have, we have a belief that um, a Messiah or Imam Mahdi will come and s spread justice. And uh, this has been promised by many uh, of our uh, re important religion uh, people, like uh, our, pr our own prophet. He has said that uh, a Messiah will come. And uh, the Messiah that will come won't just 
um, belong to a group of people. He belongs to all the people from the earth. He will the change that he will bring will uh, have an effect on everyone uh, across the world. Thank you for your explanation. It seems to be a great solution to our problems. So us Shias believe that he would reappear someday very soon. Can you tell us how we have to uh, prepare for him and what would the world look like when he reappears? Well, um, he won't re he, all, all of this won't happen in just a flash. It will it it, take time. We need to prepare ourselves, our brains, our souls by encouraging them and, um, and making a community. We need to have good deeds and stop, uh, stop the, wor the, the bad deeds that we, the bad uh, things that we do. And um, well, uh, we need to be a good Montezer basically. Imam Sadiq has said uh, a narration uh, and uh, that is that a good, uh, whoever wishes to be among the companions of Imam Mahdi, he should have piety and have the best of manners and personal attributes. Then he is a real Montezer of Imam Mahdi. This was said in Nu'mani Kitab al page 106. <coughs> Dear guests and panelists, we need to spread the, just, the message of Imam Mahdi's justice and tell everyone that they need to get ready and prepare themselves. We need to tell in this to all countries and all communities from everywhere around the globe. And he is the promised one. He, he, uh, he is the promised one. All the prophets, all and Allah even, mentions that he will reappear and remove corruption and, uh, and injustice from the face of earth and um, bring peace and happiness to everyone. So uh, we need to pray for his reappearance uh, and inshallah if he uh, comes one day and we will see him, uh, he will uh, do what he has to do and uh, make, bring peace to the world. Let's pray for his reappearance and face Mecca and ask Allah for, for his reappearance. Please stand up and join me to recite Dua Faraj. Allahumma kulli waliyk Al-Hujjat ibn al-Hasan
Thank you very much uh, to our brothers. It was a really good program, and they put a lot of effort behind this. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. So uh, we were just going through the answers, the first competition, and it's been pretty competitive. We had actually 10 people who got all the answers right. And I can assure you, except two people, no one else knew the questions and the answers. So basically, it was a very well-kept secret. So we're going to go with the second competition. The way it's going to work, we're going to take the 10 top people in each competition, combine them, and then we will do a draw. The other thing was about the early competition, that the people who came at 5.30 and basically entered our early competition, we had about 50 people who we collected the questionnaire, the, the answers from them, and it was like pretty good as well. Like we had, that was 20 questions, pretty hard questions, and we had a lot of good answers. I think we had people who answered about 17 of those questions right. So the prizes for that is separate. We're gonna go through the competition. Again, another 10 questions, very short time. We're gonna go through them one by one, and you put the answers in the second sheet that you have. Again, in your folder, you have a small sheet. This is competition two, and you have 10 empty boxes in there. Uh, one thing that I noticed from some of the answers was that people put like text or uh, they some explanation around the boxes. It's pretty hard to correct those ones. So basically, just put the letter. So just go with the one that you think is closest to the answer. Please, no explanation or anything. Or the actual answer, just the letter, please. So, so can we go with the, uh, with the second competition, please, on the screen? So we're gonna go 30 seconds, 30 seconds for each of these. Uh, can we have the first question, please? So, this is a very, very easy one. This is just like a warm up for the second one. I mean, we can really give this one 10 seconds and go to the next one. Can we go to the next question, please? So, there is a three digit number. The second digit is four times as big as the third digit. So, the second digit is four times as big as the third digit, while the first digit is three less than the second digit, what is the number? So the answers we have is 131, 142, 582, and 241. So five seconds. Can we go to the next question, please? This is really easy. Uh, what is the answer to 7, 8 plus 8, 7? The answers are 165 or 175 or 185, 78, 87, 787, and you even have an uh, option for can't say. So, uh, so 7, 7, 8 plus 8, 7. I think it's time. Let's go to the next question. So it's a pseudoco. It's a very easy one. Uh, basically, the person who came with this question searched in Google for easy pseudoco. So there is a red question mark in the middle. What is that number in this pseudoco? So if you don't know the rules of pseudoco, in each of those like squares, you have number from one to nine. And uh, so you, no number can be repeated. And also in each row or column, you only have one to nine. So no, no number can be repeated. So what's a red question mark? The answer is one or two or five or eight. I think we can go to the next question now. So here's a similar question that you had in the first competition. We have two narrations here. Uh, I know probably not everyone can read this, so I'm going to go through it. And then we're going to ask some questions from this. Nothing outside this. All the answers are going to be in these two narrations. So the first one, I even have a bit of a hard time of reading it. But uh, uh, the narration is this. And as for the reappearance, then it is with Allah, and those who fit a time are liars. Basically, whoever tried to predict it is a liar. So the second narration. If there remains only one day for the end of this world, Allah will prolong that day till he raise a person from the Persian whose name will be my name and whose agnam or lagab will be my lagab. He will fill the earth with justice and equality as it would be fraught with injustice and tyranny. 
tyranny. So, first question, which one of these sentences are correct? Time of reappearance cannot be predicted. It is possible to say reappearance will not happen soon. Time of reappearance can be predicted. Whoever says the reappearance cannot be predicted is a liar. So select the answer which is closest to the correct answer. Can we go to the next one, please? So completely different context. Mary, who is 16 years old, is four times as old as, his bro as her brother. How old will Mary be when she's twice as old as her brother? I think you need to think about this a bit. The answers are 20, 24, 25, 26, and 28. So 16 year old, four times as old as her brother, when she's twice as old as her brother. What age? Next, let's go to the next question now. Choose the world, choose the word most similar to trustworthy. I mean, this is really easy. So we're gonna give this like six seconds. So the answers, are, I'm gonna read them so we get more time. So it's resolute, tenacity, relevant, insolent, and reliable. So can we go to the next one, please? Which one of the following things is the least like the other? Very easy. Poem, novel, painting, statue, flower. Can we go to the next one, please? Can we go to the previous one? So I think like there was some objection. So quickly, you see it again? So now we're gonna go to the next one. If you remember the letter, uh, if you rearrange the letters, C, I, F, A, I, P, C, you would have a name of, so try to rearrange the letters and see if you will have a name of a city, an animal, ocean, river, or country. And it can be only one of them. So we give this a few seconds, and let's go to the next one. So this is a difficult one. Uh, which one of the following is Amir Ali? So basically people introduce themselves during the program. Did I? Uh, but uh, anyways, so uh, like uh, one of these people is Amir Ali. So W, X, Y, or Z. I think his family will have a bit of advantage, but like that's the only people who have advantage. Uh -huh. So that's the end of it. Uh, could my colleagues please uh, collect the answer sheets? Again, I insist if you haven't filled in your registration form, please fill in your registration forms because that's the only way we can link you to your answer sheets. So please fill in the registration form and give it to my colleagues who are collecting the answer sheets now, if you haven't done so already. Yeah, I think you're gonna make it easier if everyone pass it to the first person in the row. Everyone pass it towards these people here, pass it to their um, left hand side. So while you're giving your answers to my colleagues, I just like explain again how the prize is going to be given to the people. So they're going to be ten to top ten people from each round of competition. We're going to put them all in a pot. We have 20 people then, uh, and people who actually attempted to, like you know got really good score in both of them, going to have better chance. We take three people out, and then we're going to have prizes for those three people. So, please recite one salawat. And please recite another salawat, please, so everyone does it. So, we are almost towards the end of the program. So, what we're going to have next is the play. So, uh, what I ask everyone, I mean, it's the fourth time, I think, like, to I think I lost, okay. So please uh, turn off your mobile phones. Please do no flash photography during the play. 
and also uh, uh, hopefully all the sort of sound and stuff going to be all fine. But please keep quiet during the play so everyone can hear what is going on. And then after the play, we're going to uh, like announce the prizes for the competition. And there is a small thing that we're going to do together. And then after that, going to be the uh, dinner networking. So uh, please turn off your mobiles. No flash photography. And remain seated. And keep quiet, please. So recite one salawat for the play uh, bunch to get ready. Tony! Oh yeah, it's Hamid Hajazi. Hamid Hajazi! I... Look, I am so sorry. <laughs> you have been a great landlord. I just need some more time. <laughs> no, let's be fair. I owe you 8,550 pounds, not 9,000. Yes, I'll pay. I'll pay you this week. Homeless? What? No, you wouldn't do that. I'm telling you, this week. No, no, no. Uh, please, Tony. I've got nowhere to go. No, please, I, I promise. I'll pay you by Friday. Tony, I promise you. All my money is with my business partner. I'll buy trust right now. Don't chuck me out. Tony! since last week. Khalid, Khalid, listen. Khalid, listen. I've got tens of thousands of pounds of debt to the bank, and I owe my landlord thousands of pounds. And uh, he's going to chuck me out of my flat this week. And I'm getting tired of planning this business with you while hiding it from my boss. If he finds out, that's it. I'm fired. So tell me my money is safe with you. No, it's 25,000 pounds. And 5,000 from last week, that's 30,000 pounds. Don't touch it. Uh, I can't meet you. I'm at work, I told you. Now? No, I can't leave. What? No, how can I tell my boss? No, I can't compete with my work. It's against the law of my workplace. Give me a break. You alright? Everything's alright? Yeah, um, just arguing with a client. I mean, not a client, uh, one of the ships, the captain, you know. How did you send that May vessel file to me, right? No, I haven't, so why are you asking? This ship left its port three weeks ago. It's halfway down the Indian Ocean, and you're telling me I know you haven't. So stop giving me work. You give me a thousand new things to do every day. What am I giving you? Piles of filing. Filing, yes, filing. The problem is you don't know how to prioritize. This ship, worth millions of pounds, worth hundreds of thousands of pounds to our business, to us, and you're breaching the main part of our promise. No insurance. <laughs> yeah, us. What? Us! You keep saying us. 
Us, yes, our company. Well, since when do I get anything? Well, would you want you... a bonus to do your job properly? I keep giving you filing, that's your excuse. Well... Okay, fine. Fine. What I want to know is what do you want in return? You want a bonus. You want me to increase your payload. What do you want me to do? You've been failing since last year. What? Failing? <laughs> then how come you've been driving a Lamborghini for the past four months while I've been Great. Pl plodding along into the office car parks every morning in a Fiat? I'm making you money and you give me nothing for it. That's fine. Just don't get on my back because of one vessel which has a captain of 25 years experience. I'll deal with the insurance. Yeah. Like you dealt with Project Norway in December. What? I said like you dealt with Project Norway in December. <sighs> with the fire. With the fire. Right! I've had up to here! You've been draining that fire down my throat for the past six months. Every time you lose money because of your stupidity, you remind me of that. I told you, you asked me to work during the holidays. I did. I said there would be problems, but I did it for you. You have no right to shove that in my face every time. Hamid, we need to prove to the other directors, and I need to prove to the other directors that you're fit for this role. Don't, don't bother, okay? You don't need to make me feel indebted just because of how you praise me in front of them. I get the job done. If that means losing it at the edge, that's fine. That's just how I work. That's why you can't pay to work. So don't pay me. I don't need your money. You do need my money. No, I don't need your money. I got my own insurance business. Whoa. with our business. Was that on the record or off the record? Hamid, if you're competing with the business, then you need to make that clear right now. Danny is here. Hamid, I didn't answer. No, I'm not, okay? So why'd you say that? We need the truth, I mean. What? Who are you? you? You turned up last year. What do you mean we need the truth? Get back to your department. This is my department. <laughs> you know what I mean. Get back to your office, Danny. Seriously, don't be an imbecile. An imbecile? Hamid, I think the only imbecile here is you. I've been working as Jan's PA since last year. And I see everything. And I chase up what he wants. I've also seen the meetings that you've been holding with our clients in meeting room seven. By the way, just a tip, Hamid. Before you start printing off marketing material for your own business, think of doing it outside your employee's office. Or at the very least, think of hiding the printouts so that loyal employees such as myself don't pick it up to report to your bosses. I am very disappointed, Hamid. You absolute snake! This is not his fault, and you need to take the rest of the day off. Looks like you're out of the way. Not yet, Daniel. But if I am, I'm taking you down with me. Oh yeah? For what? For withholding information about me that you should have reported. <laughs> oh dear, you really are clutching at straws. Well, listen, at least you don't need to go far to beg for benefits at the job centre. It's right next to your Islamic mosque. Ha! <laughs> wow. You really are a moron.
های بابا سلام الو الو های بابا سلام یس مرسی یو تو ها بابا دی لاین از ریلی بد هلو دی لاین از بد نو دی لاین از بد ام گود هاو ار یو هاو از مامان My business is great. Yes, I'm growing the business. Yes. I'm in a really important meeting now with my uh, clients. Where? Oh, you're in Mashhad. Okay, that's great. No, no, you don't need to pray to Imam Raza for me. I'm fine. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Yes, I'm listening. What do you want me to say? Assalamu alayka ya Imam Reza. Sorry? I said it. it. It was with passion. Baba, please. I really have to go. Uh, this business is very important. Okay, Baba. I love you too. Yes, I will. Alaikum salam Muhammad. How are you? May Allah accept your prayer. Thank you. You too. Have you prayed? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, no. I mean, I haven't had time. I just wanted to... Uh, I mean, I will later. Don't worry. Prayer is like a cut sweet lemon. Eat it quick before it turns bitter. You're right. My parents say the same thing. Well, you have time now. Our meeting is at 1.45. It's now 1.30. Uh, yeah, no, I will. I just... Um, Uh, oh, I wanted to settle my affairs first so that I can concentrate on Allah. <laughs> Why don't you concentrate on Allah first and leave it to him to settle your affairs for you? <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, Mohammed, listen, I spoke with my agents in Turkey and they asked me to give them a quote for my clients, the marine insurance and cargo cover. Once I provide them with an estimate, they will pay for one year's work and I will give you your 20%. Thank you. Where is the money? Where is your money, actually? Uh, it's with my business partner. Who, Khalid? Yes. Oh, yes, you met him at the exhibition. Yes. Yeah, and my money is safe with him. All 30,000 pounds? My life savings. Is there a contract? <laughs> a contract between friends? Is he a good friend? Well, he's going to make me good money. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. Uh, no, he's good. I mean, I've known him for 10 years, so yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, doesn't sound like you're his uh, fan. No, he mocked our religious classes and said that I'm wasting my time with Imam Zaman, alayhi salam. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, um, to him, his religion, to you, yours. He's a modern man. He doesn't hate religion. He was just teasing you. <laughs> you need to choose your helpers wisely.
This is a mid Shaban lecture that I attended. Mm. Imam Reza alayhi salam said, the Imam is like your closest companion, the kindest of fathers, your closest brother, and a mother who has unconditional love for her child. Anyway, Muhammad, this is a great opportunity. And don't think that I'm not serious. This is important for me. I need this business to clear all my debts. And then I can start looking for a wife like you advised. Inshallah. <laughs> I advised you this two years ago. <laughs> OK, OK. So w will you send me the figures? Um, you've done all the hard work. Just one more push. I always keep my promises. <laughs> You're right, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Muhammad. Listen, I will supply you with great business. Think of me as your representative. Yeah. Anyway, um, so everything okay with you? Yes, alhamdulillah. Um, why do you ask? Well, just before, I mean, <laughs> you know, when you were standing, it looked like you had a lot to say to God. <laughs> When I was standing, I was speaking to Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Now he is Allah's representative. Oh, okay. Don't you talk to the best helper after every prayer? Talk to him? Yes, talk to him. Shaitan whispers evil, right? Sometimes, I guess, yeah. So Imam Mahdi can whisper good to you, right? He is your guide. And friend, he can help you. You should talk to him. Share with him with everything. You speak to a hundred different people every day, don't you? This is the Imam. He is waiting. You should always talk to him and tell him all your problems. Sometimes, I can actually feel the Imam praying for me and helping me. I'm telling you. Well, that's good. Then do it. Because if you don't do it, you're losing out. Just like Imam Reza said, he is your closest friend. Just speak to him like you're speaking to your mother or your father. Talk to him. Anyway, um, I need to go. I've got another meeting soon. Can we meet again this time next week, inshallah? Yes, yes, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. Tony, I was just going to call you now. No, 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 give me one week, please. I saw it. Give me three days. I know. Tony, please. I can't afford another. Okay, by tomorrow. I'll pay for two months rent, I promise. All my money is with my business partner. I have nothing. I have minus 300 pounds in my bank account. I'm telling you. Come on, Tony. Okay, two months rent tomorrow, fine. Yes, I promise. Just please don't change the lock, please. Tony, man. Yeah, well, he's, he, he is. Yeah, just, just one, just one second. Uh, what are you doing here? Uh, yeah, I just want to I say. I thought I told you to take the rest of the day off. You said. Uh, yeah, that meant leave. Like, yeah, I know. I, you, well, I just wanted to say to you okay, that. Okay, just wait, hold on. Um, yeah, he's here. Shall I? Okay. 
Okay, bye. Uh, Hamid, take a seat. Okay. I I'm glad you've calmed down because, you know, I, I mean, want to explain. You're being dismissed. <laughs> you're kidding. No, this is real. And this has nothing to do with the dispute earlier. My business. Danny, that rat. This is not his fault. This is your fault. Your fault, Hamid. You've been lying to our company, using our paper, our printers. And during the investigation at lunch, we found out you've been using our cap, com our cap company, for God's sake. What is the matter with you? You've all been putting me down ever since Danny joined here. He's turned all of you against me. Hamid, you're fired. Leave it. But I have, I have, I have 50,000 pounds in debt. Um, I have thousands in debt. And my, my landlord is going to kick me out this week. I mean, either I pay him or, or I pay my credit card debts. Either I'm homeless or I'm in court. It's not a problem. Uh, no, uh, Jan, just fire me next week, please. It's a, it's a serious offense. It's a serious offense, Hamid. What? It's a summary dismissal. Well, uh, like... Without notice? Yeah. Oh, come on, no! No, no. Uh, Jan, uh, give, me, give me a thousand pounds. I'll, I'll pay you back next week, seriously. Uh, please, I've been loyal to you. You have not been loyal to me. You have not been loyal to me. You've been everything but loyal to me. You've been stealing in front of my eyes. This is a disgrace. No way am I paying you a single penny. And the last three projects, it stipulates in your contract that for the last 90 days, you wouldn't get a single bit of commission. What? No. No, 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 no. Please, please. Get up, you idiot. Oh, God, oh, God. the job center is right next to your mosque. This will be embarrassing your friends from the mosque seeing you beg for benefits at the job center. <laughs> By the way, this is the nail in your coffin. I've told everyone about your lies, deceit, and competing with the business. There aren't that many marine insurers out there, but they all know you now. You will never get employed again. This pen is company property, not yours. My name is Hamid Hijazi. I'm calling to see if you have any vacancies. I'm not registered, no. Yeah, I'm a financial consultant uh, specializing in marine insurance businesses. And I have seven years of experience. Yes, I'm ready to start as soon as possible. I mean, literally tomorrow. Yes, but do you have anything? Can I hold? Yes, sure. You have six new messages. To listen to your messages, press one. First new message. Good afternoon. This is a message for Hamid Hijazi. Uh, I'm Rebecca Hellman from Orion Recruitment. You spoke with my colleague Sandra Wicks earlier on. Hamid, I'm afraid there are no vacancies at all in your area of work, and I don't think there'll be anything relevant for several months at least. But I'll keep your CV on file, and we'll be in touch if we find anything in a few months. Thanks. Bye. To listen to the message...
Message deleted. Next new message. Hamid, where are you? It's Tony. Right, I've not received any rent from you. Nothing at all. It's 4pm and that's it. You're out there tomorrow. I'm changing the lock tomorrow. I'm not going to be messed around. Start packing tonight. Ridiculous. Next new message. Hello, my name is Tanya Wolf. I'm leaving a message for Hamid Hi J Z. It's Hijaz, not Hi J Z. Apologies if I haven't. I'm calling from KFM Finance Recruitment. I understand you spoke with James Gower in our head office looking for a marine insurance position. Unfortunately, we have nothing that matches your criteria. We are looking for sales assistant roles, but the pay is much lower than what you were looking for. I'll try calling you again tomorrow afternoon. Thanks. Bye bye. Next new message. Salam Ahmed, where are you? Your mobile's busy. Listen, Hamid, I've got some bad news. The thing you've been expecting for the last two months, Khalid, he's left the UK. He's gone. Ali said he's taken all your money. I knew Khalid was an absolute thief, and I cannot believe you trusted Khalid. He's gone. Call the police. I don't know where you are. Call me. Next new message. Hey, Amid. How you doing? Amid. Hamid, Hamid, Hamid. Oi, oi, oi. Hamid, Hamid, Hamid. Oi, oi, oi. Hamid, oi. Hamid, oi. Hamid, Hamid, Hamid. Oi, oi, oi. Oh. Anyway, call me, yeah? Next new message. Hamid, hello, Baba. Hamid, it is I'm ready. Hello, Hamid, it's Baba. Pick up. Huh. I know you are busy with business. Sorry for calling too much today, Baba. I am. I am excited very much for you, Baba. I know you will be a successful businessman. I am so proud today. I am sitting in hotel and I see your mom Reza and your mom cried because she misses you. And we asked Emma Reza to help you and that you will always be successful. Uh, we love you, Baba. End of messages. Homeless? What? <laughs> no, you, you wouldn't, wouldn't do that. that. I'm, I'm getting tired of planning, planning this business, business with you while hiding, hiding from my boss. boss. If, if he, he finds out, out that's, that's it. it. I'm, I'm fired. fired. Tell me my money is safe. Tell me my money is safe. I'm bitterly disappointed. Oh, well, well, please. I have, I have to go. go. This, this business, business is very important. How many you're being dismissed? No, no, please! Get up, you idiots! Get up, you idiots! Get up, you idiots! This is Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Tell him your problems. Share with him. He won't abandon you. Seriously. This is the Imam. He is just waiting. Talk to him, Hamid. Talk to him, Hamid. Sayyidi Assalamu alaik Ya ibn Rasulullah Sayyidi Fujjat ibn al-Hasan al-Askari Qaybatun jahan Ya Mahdi, please. I've lost my job, my reputation. I've lost my employment prospects. I've lost my money. I've lost 30,000 pounds. I've lost my flat. Lost my business. Please, please, just don't let me lose my dignity. 
Please don't let me have to go to the, the, the job center. Everyone will see me. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Please, I've lost everything. Just let me keep my dignity. Do something, anything. Help me before even getting near the queue for the job center. Oh God, I sound so pathetic. Oh, Mahdi, please. so ashamed. I never talked to you. And now, it's about material things. Get me closer to you. I'm sorry. I promise. From now on, I'll do my prayers on time. Help me. Help me. Okay, so this is the job center. I have to swallow my pride and just go to the job center. What's wrong with it? If I get a job, I can build my way back up. Oh God, but everyone will see me there. And what job will they give me anyway? Some cheap job. Oh God, I'm so arrogant. Businesses. So, yeah, I don't need that. Marine! <laughs> like soldiers, yeah? American soldier. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, anyway, hopefully they got something for me, yeah? See you later. <laughs> oh. Hamid Hejazi? Yes. <laughs> now, this is a coincidence. <laughs> I recognize you from your Facebook page. Sorry? I'm sorry, I'm Alex Lee of Barters Lee and Co Investments. You submitted your business plan to us. Oh my God, yes, Alex Lee. Oh my God, but that, but that, but that was over a year ago. Uh, 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 sorry, I mean, oh, oh my God, this is crazy. It didn't exist. You didn't even exist until this very morning. An intern found a box in the basement and brought it to my desk. And on top of the box was your business plan. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it, it's, it's excellent. Your business plan is excellent. Listen, we've had a meeting about this and everything's okay. Look, I have your bank details. We sit down today, sign the agreement, and I transfer the 120,000 pounds you need to your account. Well, 25% today and 75% next week, obviously when we have your clearances. Are you happy to go ahead? Well, it sounds like a yes to me. <laughs> That's how we do business. Anyway, my 9.30 didn't show up this morning and I'm back to the city. <laughs> do you live around here? Where were you going? Huh? I hope it's neither the job centre or the mosque. You'll be begging at both. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, I, I was just going to go to the post office to post something. Well, go then. Don't be late to your work. You are our investment now. Anyway, I'll call you this afternoon and we'll discuss everything, okay? After that, see you later.
Looking for a job is not a shame. And do not be ashamed of asking people's help. Don't have any prejudice. We all need each other. You know, there are some people nowadays who wouldn't admit going to a mosque. Why? These are places for worshipping of Allah. Allah says work hard for this life. Yes, work hard, but work even harder for the next one. The one that is everlasting. But get help from people, from family, from good friends. And who is the best of friends? You know what Imam Reza says about this? Imam Reza alayhi salam says, Imam is like a best friend to you. Why don't you ask your best friend for help? The one who has the power. The one who is the representative of Allah. Imam Reza alayhi salam says, Imam is like a kind father to you. He is like a very close brother to you. His kindness is like that of a mother to an infant. Once you have such a kind, powerful source of help, why not ask him for help? Would you even hesitate to ask your best friend for help? Why do we abandon a man like that? Why do we abandon our Imam? Love him, respect him, share with him, get help from him, and pray for him. Pray for what is most bothering your kind father. Pray for his reappearance. Let's pray for our best helper and kind father together. delay based on the agenda. I think we are about 20 minutes or odd behind the schedule. So what we're going to do, we, we're going to try to just like the wrap up part pretty quick. So what we're going to do is like announce the prizes. Um, and while we're doing this in your uh, folders that you got, there is a feedback form. And we really appreciate if you fill in that feedback form while basically we're announcing the prizes. You will still have time to fill in that feedback form afterwards as well. But this feedback form will help us to adjust the program for the next years. We know what parts you liked, what parts we could improve on, and all the other bits and pieces. So for the prizes, I want to ask Aya Lari to come on the stage to uh, hand the prizes, please. Who recite one salawat? So, for the uh, competition, uh, basically, it was a pretty true process to uh, find the winners and do the draw. We couldn't actually do the draw on this stage, one, because of the time, and the second thing was matching the IDs to the names on the registration form. So that was basically pretty challenging. Um, so I'm going to start with the early competition uh, prize winners. So uh, the registration number is 1026. I don't know you would know who you are, but the name is Sayyid Ali Hijazi. Can we have Ali Hijazi on this stage, please? 
to collect his prize. So it is totally by coincidence that a father and his son won the prize for the early competition. So can we have Amir Hejazi on the stage as well for the another prize? As I said, when we were doing the draws, it was only numbers. So just quite like completely a coincidence. So again, for the for the early competition, can I have uh, Zainab Sarmadi on the stage as well, please? So the prizes that we are giving out like uh, for the early competition of our two types. So one is basically a fitness device, uh, which is uh, basically when you run and when you walk, it basically will, uh, it's a, like sort of activity tracker and the other one is a flask. So can we have, for the LA competition, can we have Huda Fahimpur on the stage as well, please? And we are related, but this was completely uh, a draw. Yeah, it was unrelated. So that's all for the LA competition. So we announced four prizes for LA competition. We want to give five, but one of the people who won the first prize for the competition also won the prize for the early competition. So we're going to announce that last. So let me go with the third person and the second person. So these people got the highest score in both competitions. So these three people that I'm going to announce. So the third prize goes to Salmane Morimi. So this is a, like a Kindle reader. So we hope you read a lot of books on this. So the second prize, uh, we said Nutribullet. So it was for like sort of nutritious foods and we could do vegetables and soups and everything. Goes to Gazelle Munfarid, I think. Oh, this is really impressive. So that's the second prize. And finally, uh, the first prize. So this person gets the first prize and also get their early competition prize. Uh, the prize is an activity tracker. Uh, it basically uh, sort of uh, tracks like heart rate, a lot of other different things. So it's a pretty good one. And also the early bird one, the early competition one, which is a flask one. So the uh, prize goes to Mariam Zahedi. So that's all. So that's all for the competition. Thank you very much. Um, so we have, so I hope like you filled in the feedback forms while we were talking. So uh, continue doing that. There is only one small thing I want to say before we close the program. I want you all to think of something that is really important to you. And if you want to know what is important to you, think about losing it. See what is the hard thing that you can lose. It could be a person, it could be a thing, or whatever. So let's keep that in our mind. What is the most important thing to us in our lives? The second thing is that we all know from the narrations from the Quran that Imam Zaman alayhi salam is of top importance. It is the most important person. It should be the most important person for us. 
So now, if we look at our hearts, and we see there is a gap between what we think should be the most important thing in our life, and what we feel, and what in our heart we feel is the most important thing for us in our life, that gap, we have to bridge it. So, just keep that as a thought in your mind. What is the most important thing in your life? Go to your heart, and when you go to your mind, you know what should be the most important thing in your life. How can we bridge this gap? Recite one salawat, please. So, the final thing before uh, you go for dinner on the other side is, if you look at the folder that we have given you, there is something there that called personal survey. So this is really important. So that personal survey should take you around two minutes. And I'm, I'm gonna ask everyone to fill in that personal survey here before they go for the dinner. So when you fill in that personal survey, you get a score for yourself. So I think that score is something between 45 and nine. So keep that number with you when you go to dinner and some people are gonna come and talk to you about that number. So go through the nine questions, select what you think is correct. We want to collect that survey, but you can keep it with you. So it's up to you. If you want to really keep it, you can keep it. But do that personal survey and work out your number and we will come to your tables during the dinner and talk to you about that number. So let's give that like, I think two, three minutes. Uh, for you to sort of complete that and work out your numbers, and then we can go to the other side for the dinner. So if there is any questions, you can like raise your hand, someone come and actually help you with the personal survey. If there is anything not clear about that. So basically what you do, you select your answers, it should really, shouldn't really take you that long, and then you add up the numbers from the columns and you get your number. So that's your personal number. And it's really good, I see like at least 50% of the people doing it, so it's really good uptake. So I've been told to mention this, that from previous years, we had this feedback that we started our program from time to time pretty late, uh, like with delays, and there were some complaints about that. So hence, we tried this year to encourage people to come early with the early competition prizes, and also really, really tried hard to stick to our agenda. Even though we are about like 20 minutes late or a bit more, uh, but like I think we really tried. So I think your feedback is definitely very valuable, so fill in those feedback forms, please. So if you have finished with your the personal survey, you can make your way to the next uh, hall. Please, uh, the, the sort of seats on the back are for the uh, ladies and the seats, like similarly to the workshop, the seats in front are uh, uh, for gentlemen. So uh, if you've done with your personal survey and you worked out your number, you can actually uh, make your way to the other hall, please. And while you're moving, please recite the salawat.